Okay, today we're going to try to show you how to make um, a spool loom knitter. And it's not going to be as fancy as this one that I show right here. This I bought at Walmart and it cost about six dollars. Comes with a little needle and of course the hook to pull the yarn out. And this is double sided as you can see. It's got five prongs here at the bottom and eight at the top. And so today I'm going to show you how you can make your own at home if you just are really tight on your budget as I am. Uh, I bought this just a few days ago and but I know some people that are um, pinching pennies as much as they can but they still want to craft so this is the alternative. What you're going to need is you're going to need some type of tubing whether it's a bathroom toilet paper roll is what I originally used. This one is white. Um, it is about, let me measure, almost two and a half. It's two and a quarter. Two and a quarter inches across. No, actually, yeah, it's a little bit less than two and a quarter inches across. And um, it doesn't have to be that wide. It can be whatever diameter size that you have around. It doesn't even have to be this. It can be something like this. These are the leftover leftovers from the spool of ribbon. When you buy some ribbon at the craft store, what they come with are these rings inside. Once you're done with the ribbon, this, and I'm just taking off the paper because it'll be in the way, this is what you're left with. And this one measures probably the same. Yep. Two and a quarter. And this one measures two and a half inches from end to end. So whatever you have around that you want to use, you are, you're more than welcome to use it. You don't have to use the, these particular items that I have here. This is just for, for sh showing purposes. You will need a box cutter or um, when it, when something that looks like this and that can cut. You're going to need some popsicle sticks, anywhere between um, four, five, or eight. Just depends on how many um, of these you want on your spool. And this is total customizable. You don't have to do it exactly like I do it. And then you're, or if you don't have the, like this box cutter here, you can get your husband's or yourselves <laughs> some uh, some of these sheer cutters these are for metal but my husband let me borrow them because I could not find my uh, my shears that I had for my craft room so I borrowed his and these are really great and then some sandpaper and let's get started I'm gonna scoot this over here Oh, and you also will need this, some type of tape and a glue gun, which I have handy over here on the side. All right. First, you want to take, whether it's your tube of, you know, toilet paper roll or whatever, if you want to make it pretty, you can. At this point, you can decorate it as much or as fancy as you want. The one thing is that these lollipop sticks will be adhered to the tube. Okay? So, if you want to cover that up, if you're covering the tube up, make sure to cover, uh, first attach the lollipop sticks to the tube and then decorate. And what you can do is completely finish everything off um, as you go along and then maybe s shoot it with a can of spray paint if you want it to be one solid color. Or uh, you can do it with some clear tape like I showed you and then later on go to the store and get you some of that fancy stuff that like the duct tape that they're, they're selling nowadays. So what you want to do is you want to take your glue gun, I'm going to take this around the camera, sorry, 
and you want to get your glue stick. Now you want to make sure you don't you don't want your um, I guess your little dowels up here to be sticking up too far. So maybe about an inch from the top of the edge of the tube you want to attach it there. So what I do is I just put a little dab well, on for a little while and then kind of guesstimate okay then I turn it over and I do the opposite Then I go around, and if you want six, you may want to measure out, you know, where you want these. I can get six in here if I wanted to, and I think I will. Two, four, six, yep. So you can go ahead and do the rest, and I'll be right back after I finish this step. Okay, I've got that portion done, and I ended up with six uh, little uh, spool rods on this one. The next thing you want to do is you want to take your tape and um, wrap the bottom portion of the, lo the popsicle sticks so they can adhere better to the spool, to the uh, tube that you're using. So I'm going to try to find the end of this tape and I'll come back when I do that. Okay, I found it. Now I'm just going to wrap it starting from the top and just going around the whole tube. The glue, the hot glue is just to help you hold them in place so it's not so awkward to tape them down. And you want to make sure you go all the way to the bottom of the popsicle stick, like I'm doing here. And give it an, a few go around, and then I start traveling further down, just to make sure that that's even. Now that doesn't look very pretty. But it is great, you know, to use. And there you go. You have your first spool knitter made. Now, if you don't have, which I'm pretty sure you guys do, have toilet paper tubes hanging around the house. But let's say you want something a little bit less obtrusive, not so big. So we're going to go ahead and use this spool right here. Now, for this one, of course, if you put these long spools in there, they, they'd be very awkward to work with. So what you need to do is you need to grab your popsicle sticks. And what I do to make a nice clean break is I score them top. If you were to, and I, trust me, I, I, I did try a couple of, of things. I tried to tear them with my scissors, and then I tried to, uh, that didn't work. And then I, I tried to do them without my scissors and just breaking them in half. But the results that you get when you do that are these. You get all these splinters on, and I don't know if you can see that. But you get the splinters on the end, okay? And I didn't like that because they're very uneven, and it doesn't, you know, you could probably get some splinters in your in your fingers. So once you score your popsicle stick, then you can easily bend it 
and you're going to make me look bad on camera. I know you are. Yep. I didn't do a very good job of scoring. I didn't score all the way across. That's why it came out like that. But I will demonstrate another one where I will score it all the way across. That way you know that this really, really does, this really does work. You don't have to score the, the thin sides, just the wide sides. Okay, once you got it scored, then you easily just kind of wiggle it, and there you go. Nice, clean cut. Uh, you do have to sand it down a little, so that's what the need for the sandpaper. And all I do is take it and do this. Round out the edges a little bit. And now you've got a nice trimmed edge there. Okay. And you can do the same for the other side. Now I trim these just in half. And as you can see, that works. That won't get in your way, you know, further down here. So do as many as you want of these, and I'll be back once I got them all glued down. Okay, so I finished gluing down my popsicle sticks. And as you can see, I got two, four, six, eight on this one. And the total measurement of my sticks, I thought they were too long just in half, so I trimmed them down just a tad bit more. And they're about an inch and a half. Well, actually, I think they're, that one's an inch and a three quarters but close enough inch and a yeah inch and three quarters is what they measure you can do them whatever size you want I just feel that this is a nice comfortable length if you can see this matches from here to here matches from here to here. It doesn't have to. You can make them shorter. You can make them longer, but the longer you make them, shorter is okay. Just a tad bit more. But longer may, you know, you may have to pull your your, your yarn too long and then it'll get real loosey-goosey. So, and if you do them too, too short, well then they won't stay in there. They'll keep slipping out. So, that's the purpose of the length here. Um, most of these come with knobs at the top to stop the yarn from moving upward. But here we don't have that. It's just plain simple. And then now you can grab your tape and tape it down. This is of course going to be much wider than the actual um, tubing is. And I'm going to try to do this on camera. Sorry about the shaking. And once I get here, I just fold it up. Just kind of do that. I need, if you want to cut it off, you can. Just makes for a neater project. Of course, it's not going to conform to the roundness of this if you want to put the tape on. If you think your glue will hold, that's fine because remember, you will be putting pressure on these and so you want them to stick down uh, as well and as firmly as possible. You can get uh, another, you can go another round. You don't have to use that wide of a tape. I just, that's all I had on hand. But that's basically the tutorial for your spool knitter.